one of the drawbacks of Stern is that it, or, or even like kubectl logs, is that it, if, uh, like when I, when I, uh, when I do kubectl logs of Stern, it has to go, uh, to the, to the node that is running the pod. Imagine that I'm, I'm trying to access some logs, but the, the node that was running that pod is down. Well, then I can't access the logs. I have to wait until the node is back because the logs are only on that node. So, and furthermore, I can't do a global search on, on all my logs. Like if I want to look for a specific error message, I, I can't do that. I have to retrieve all the logs and then grab and aggregate. So that's where having centralized logging helps. Um, so <clears throat> that way I can send all my logs to a central place. That central place can also index my logs. So now, as long as that central place is up, I have access to my logs, even if the rest of the cluster goes up or down. And I can also like uh, do searches and counts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so here, since um, I won't have the time to do the demo, but I want to explain the general uh, idea behind that, uh, in particular to explain the path of a log line uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. So when a container uh, writes something on STD out or STDR, this gets um, piped to the container engine, whether it's Docker or something else. The container engine receives the log line, uh, and it will send that to a logging driver. Um, it, with the default setup for the Docker engine, that logging driver is going to be something called JSON file. So it's a file in JSON format. Uh, and it's in a specific directory on the nodes, like var log, containers, etc., etc. So for instance, if I go to node 2, and I go to var log containers, uh, then I could go to worker, anything really. And here, uh, I can see the, the logs of the worker service. And we can see it's JSON because I have like the timestamp, something indicating it, if it's STD out or STDR, and then the logging message itself. So when I do kubectl logs or stern, um, I talk to the API server. The API server finds out, okay, where is that pod? Oh, that pod is on node 3. So then the API server connects to the kubelet on node 3 and asks to the kubelet, hey, give me the logs for that specific pod and container, and then the kubelet is going to get the information from these files. Okay. Now, when I add a central logging system, what I do is that I, and, and this is, uh, I mean, there are multiple ways to do that, but this is the easiest and, and most straightforward way. Um, we run an agent on each node. So for instance, with a daemon set, that agent is going to access uh, this var log containers directory and it's going to scan these files and it's going to uh, pass them and then send these logs to the, the central store. Um, if we're using EFK, Elasticsearch Fluent Kibana, that central store is going to Elasticsearch. So it stores the log lines in Elasticsearch and then we can use the Kibana front end to access the logs. I'm going to Skip that demo to uh, to stay within the time that we have. Um, <clears throat> but if you have questions on logging, oh yeah, and also to clarify, if you are running on a an any cloud provider, what you will typically want to do is send the logs uh, to the logging facility of that cloud. So if you are on AWS, that's going to be CloudWatch. If you are on Google Cloud, that's going to be StackDriver, etc., uh, etc. Et so that you can then con well, first of all. Uh, that saves you from having to operate Elasticsearch or, or Splunk or something like that. And also it helps you to have all the logs of your, um, cloud applications in the same, in the same place. So you can cross together like, um, your, uh, load balancer logs and your application logs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> 